Hey guys, this is Post Production Pi with SRLounge.com. All right guys, so we're gonna go through in this tutorial and cover basic dust correction, and then we're gonna go through an advanced tutorial on dust correction and show you guys some really cool tricks. So let's get started on this image right here. This is exercise file 1-3-2. We're gonna zoom into our little dusty area up here that we see, uh, and I'm gonna just click on it to zoom in, and then we're gonna select our dust selection tool by hitting Q, or dust removal tool, not selection. We don't wanna select our dust, we wanna remove it. All right, and so we're going to make our brush size just a little bit larger than the area that we're actually trying to correct. So right here, we're gonna go up to about size, let's see, like 77-ish. And I'm just mouse wheeling up and down to change the size, but you guys can use the left and right bracket if you guys like as well. Uh, we're gonna click right there, and that looks great. It's pulling from the sample area, so what it does is it's gonna guess the sample area um, and try and basically use the correct sample area to replace the target area. And in this case, it guessed correctly, so we're good. We can move on. I'm gonna move to this next one. I'm gonna hold down the space bar just to move my window and click and drag. And now the reason why we're using healing as opposed to cloning is because when I'm dealing with like graduating areas where the colors are shifting, like say over skin or over skies, cloning it out might actually reveal the area that the target area that you're using to clone into this uh, or, or the sample area that you're using to clone in the target area because the sample area might have a slightly different kind of tonal range than the the target area so to get a better effect typically on, on stuff like this I'm using the heal tool so that it kind of uh, graduates the colors and it kind of heals and samples and then interpolates what should go into that target area all right let's zoom out I'm gonna click uh, while holding the space bar to zoom out and we have this huge long hair right here, but if you guys remember when we talked about it, we can't really do much with this inside of Lightroom, just because we can't shift the, uh, we can't really click and drag with our, our tool, we can't do too much with this dust removal tool, it's not like a, a full healing tool. So this is something that we'd need to take into Photoshop. Uh, let's just kind of browse around and see if there's any other dust that we need to remove. And I don't think there is. All right. So we can't visibly see any other dust right now. Um, when we go to the next tutorial, I'm gonna show you guys a technique that we can kind of bring out the rest of it. But that's fine for now. What we're gonna do is save this as a new snapshot and we're gonna say 02 uh, and we'll say uh, basic dust removal. Hit create and let's go on to exercise file 2-1 and let's do the same thing. Now, once again, there's certain bits of dust in this image that are gonna be really difficult to remove. The stuff that's gonna to be tough to remove is the stuff that we see up here in the uh, kind of the bokeh lights. This is gonna to be tough to remove because it's right along an edge and we really need a more advanced tool to be able to remove that kind of dust. Now for the rest of it, we can remove these little small flecks just by clicking on them and healing them out uh, and then kind of moving the sample area to wherever we need. And you'll notice that this, this uh, image has a ton of dust flecks. So, I'm not gonna spend all of the time in this tutorial going over it. What we'll do is I'm just gonna show you basically how we're doing each one in each area. You guys can just as a example, just kind of do it on your own and save it out to again, basic dust correction. So let's just go through some of it right now. I don't wanna kill all your time just you know doing dust correction. So I'm gonna replace that with this. And what I'm doing is I'm lining up this line above it so that when it heals, it heals using those lines and so we get a nice effect. Now we need to set up smaller ones to be able to heal out like these smaller bits of dust and stuff like that. And actually that's kind of noticeable right there. So I'm gonna hit Q again. This might be one of those areas where, well, let's see if we can get it to work from down here. It might not be one of those things that we can fix easily from Lightroom. Yeah, it's not gonna work from there either. So let's delete this and let's see what we can do. You know, with this line right here, we're gonna to have to probably take care of that in Photoshop. So let's go and take care of all the other small dust. I'm just gonna, once again, move my uh, size down so it's just barely bigger than the areas that I'm replacing and just keep clicking on all this dust. Now this is a good kind of time to remind you guys that when you guys are shooting especially when you're raising your aperture and uh, you know if you're shooting wide open you're not going to see that much dust on your lens because you're shooting with a wide open aperture but as soon as you start stopping it down start doing longer exposures landscape shots you're going to see every little bit of dust and check out how much time this is taking. If we would have had our sensor and our lens clean, and what you're probably seeing actually is mostly lens dust. Most people confuse sensor dust with lens dust. Um, and oftentimes when you open up the camera to clean that sensor or when you have it done, there's really not that much in there. Uh, so I'd say if you're shooting a lot, it's good to clean your, your sensor probably every few months. 
Uh, but every single time you go out and shoot, you need to make sure you're cleaning your lenses. That's where most of the dust that you're going to see in your images is coming from. So as you can see, guys, we're just going through and clicking here, and hopefully you guys are following along too. Uh, we're just kind of adjusting the brush size as we go to make sure that our, uh, our brush is just barely slightly larger than the area that we're healing out. And I'm just clicking on my space bar, or I'm holding my space bar whenever I want to move my image, and then clicking and dragging. So holding the spacebar brings up my hand tool, which I can use to kind of click and drag and navigate through the image. If we want, we can also zoom to 3 to 1 and see a little bit closer detail, which helps us get a little bit more into the uh, kind of fine detail of the image and kind of do a little better job of correcting the dust. But you can see how many times we've already corrected dust, and we're only like, say, a third of the way through the image. What you want to do is periodically is hit Q and make sure that you don't really see, I'm going to go to 1 to 1, make sure that we don't really see any of the stuff that we're correcting. Like, Make sure your corrections are actually good corrections. If you have issues with them, like in this spot, then you know that that's something that we need to fix in Photoshop. All right guys, so let's keep working through the image. And how I typically like to work when I'm doing dust removal is I like to work top to bottom, left to right. It just kind of helps me keep track of everything that I'm doing. So I'm gonna go back up to the top over here. We're gonna fix this stuff up here. Uh, let's cl keep clicking. And we're just gonna move from area to area, top to bottom as we go. So if we see anything, if we, any of the uh, sampled areas are incorrect, I'm going to fix them. Otherwise, we're just going to keep moving through. All right, so now I'm going to move down a little bit, and we're just going to keep kind of navigating down through our image. We already did this area a little bit when we were talking about it earlier. And then we're going to go right back up to the top, and then go back down again, and kind of just keep going this pattern to, uh, left to right, top to bottom. So I want you guys to actually do this now. Uh, I'm going to for this tutorial is going to be like 20 minutes long if we actually sit here and do it all in the tutorial. So I'm going to go through and remove the dust and we'll be back in one second to save out the snapshot. So you guys can pause this right now and then uh, go through and remove the dust as well and come back in one second. Alright guys, so we just finished up cleaning up most of the small bits of dust that we can actually clean up inside of Lightroom. Look at all those dust flecks. So at this point what we want to do is hit Q and just kind of take a look at it, make sure that we don't have any areas where we can actually noticeably see dust that we've removed. Uh, and it looks like I actually see a little tiny spot right there, so I'm going to remove that too. I'm going to hit, oh, nope, that's one of the areas that we did remove and it looks like it didn't do a good job. So that's exactly what we're talking about. We're going to fix that, move the sample area over a better area so that it does a better job healing it out. And now we're good. Now the rest of the dust that we're seeing in this image, all this dust in the bokeh as well as this little fleck right here, is stuff that we probably need to go into Photoshop to remove. So we're not going to worry about it, but you guys can get an idea of just how long it can take to remove all of the dust from an image like this. And that's why we include this image in this catalog. So once again, just a reminder, Clean your sensors every few months, uh, and then clean your lenses every time you go out and shoot, especially right before you set up a shot like this, where you stop down the aperture, where you're doing a long exposure, or whatever it is that you're doing. Anytime you're stopping down the aperture, take a glance at that lens and just clean off the, the front element of the lens just to make sure that you don't have anything on there. Because even if you clean it off earlier that day, if you're going out to a dusty location by the end of the day or by whenever you're shooting, it can have a lot of dust on there too. So these little tips are going to save you guys a lot of time, especially when it comes to removing dust from your images. Okay guys, so at this point, this is what you guys should see. I'm going to hit Q to bring up our little dust removal tool. We have this much dust removed, and now we're going to save this out as a new snapshot. So I'm going to go to the snapshots, and we're going to say 02 uh, basic dust removal. So we have removed dust on both this image as well as this image. Alright guys, so let's go on to the next tutorial where we talk about a little bit of advanced dust removal techniques.